This afternoon, we talk about the COVID-19 audit reports because the opposition National Democratic Congress is asking uh, the Public Accounts Committee to expedite public hearings on the COVID-19 uh, audit reports recently released uh, by the Auditor General, which found serious infractions in the disbursement of public funds during the pandemic. As part of the remedial measures, the audit service uh, called for the retrieval of some $80 million worth of COVID-19 vaccines, uh, which remain undelivered. The Auditor General is also questioning why honor certificates were raised for food items distributed by the Gender and Social Protection Ministry. Well, at a news conference uh, moments ago, National Communications Officer for the NDC, Sami Jainfi, called for immediate measures to deal with persons culpable of the financial embezzlement. Sit aloof and watch the mother serpent of corruption and its appearance fee collection vice Alaji Bahumia. White watch this audit report and sweep it under the carpet as they have done in time past. Enough is enough. Unlike President Kufuado, who has proven to be the chief corruption clearing agent the whole world witnessed how the Malawian president Lazarus Chakwera cracked the whip on officials of his government who were found to have misused COVID-19 funds. The Malawian president is on record to have fired his labor minister, Ken Kandudu, together with 19 other public officials. Friends, Kadundu's crime was that he used less than $800. Listen to me carefully. His crime was that he used less than $800 of COVID-19 fund on allowances for a trip to South Africa with the president of Malawi. This is what decisive leadership is all about. But alas, here in Ghana, Officials of the Ekufuado Bawumia government received promotion and pattern at the back for engaging in acts of plain stealing of public funds. The NDC hereby calls on the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament to expedite its public hearings on the special audit report into COVID-19 funds. This hearing should be televised live for the Ghanaian public to follow and be apprised of how their government expended COVID-19 funds. Secondly, we urge Parliament to compel the Auditor General to exercise his power of surcharge and disallowance to retrieve all COVID-19 funds that have been misapplied or misused to various infractions. Well, so that's the demand of the opposition National Democratic Congress. Don't forget that just last week, former Auditor General Daniel Yaldamalifo called uh, on his successor to equally exercise that same power of surcharge. As to why there is no disallowance or surcharges uh, recently, I think the, the best person to uh, answer that should be the Auditor General. Remember the Constitution under Article 1A7 plus 7, D provides that the Auditor General in the performance of his function can disallow any item, in fact, he used the word may, disallow any item of expenditure which is contrary to law and surcharge the people responsible. And that is what I sought to do because I thought if there are no consequences for the infractions, the culture of impunity will continue. So that is what I sought to do and I know for sure that the current Auditor General, Mr. Johnson, as he do, uh, is more than capable of uh, doing the same. Maybe uh, they may, he may have some challenges, which I am not aware of, but I thought, uh, but I think that by the time I left office, the mechanisms and the institutional arrangements were in place, which he, he can use to do same. Yeah, but, but you want him to go ahead and search out, do you? Of course, yes. In fact, I was waiting to hear that Following this report, these people who are misusing money have been surcharged because if we don't do that, we can continuously audit. He can send his people thousand and one times on the field, but we will continue getting these infractions. And even people get emboldened, uh, emboldened because they think that nothing is going to happen as a result of this audit.
So uh, I, I, it is my wish and my expectation that those that you say refer refund should go ahead, serve them with notice of intention to disallow and say charge and say charge them. If they are not happy, they should go to court. It doesn't matter whether they go to court or they don't go to court. Uh, uh, it, it is quite deterrent. And if they go to court, well, they may win, they may not win. The, the auditor general may lose some of the cases, may win some of the cases, but that is the name of the game. Well, so this is the second time we're hearing of that demand for not just public accounts, but the need to surcharge as well. So let's expand the conversation. I want to bring in Benjamin Kwashi, chairperson of the NDC Council of Elders in South Africa. Uh, Adam Senano is co-chair uh, of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. Hadi Yakubu is fighter general of the Economic Fighters League. Uh, and uh, Hadi, Happy New Year. I've not seen you the whole of this year, so uh, it's good to have you on. Of course, you have some perspectives on this matter as well, uh, asking that Parliament Institute, of course, and commence uh, the hearings into the COVID-19 expenditure. Uh, but some say, well, a lot of what has gone under the bridge and what we should see now is action from the president. Where, you, where do you stand on this? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Blessed, and uh, bless, Blessed, good afternoon to you and the co-panelists and, and the people of Ghana. Yeah, Happy New Year. Uh, this is the first time I'm, I'm speaking on your platform. It's, yeah. Um, I think um, in a serious country, this will not even be a discussion. You know, by now, actions would already have been taken um, about this wanton dissipation of public resources um, in the name of COVID-19. And I think it is very telling that even though we have been told that the COVID-19 pandemic had uh, devastated the Ghanaian economy, um, it actually turned out to be a cash cow for some people to loot and share. I think that we need seriously, and this is something that we've been saying over and over again. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes you get wary, you, you, you get worn out of saying all these things over and over again, because it is very, very easy. Now, the political economy of corruption, the political economy of stealing, you know, white collar stealing, is very, very clear. The reason why uh, Domelovo is not Auditor General today is because Domelovo, um, you know, dared to uh, surcharge certain powerful people in the government. You remember the issue about the $1 million payment to some company that did not do any work and that invited surcharge by the Auditor General on the former senior minister, now senior presidential advisor, Yaosef Omafo. And that is where the troubles began. So the political economy of corruption starts from the constitution of the republic, which gives power, enormous power, to the executive to do almost whatever they like. And they appoint the auditor general, they supervise the, the, the processes, and they can do all manner of machinations to remove the Auditor General. I think that the things that happened to Domelevo may be the, the, the reasons, or some of the reasons, why this current Auditor General is hesitant in issuing uh, disallowances and surcharges. Um, but but, that's, but that's, your, that's your personal sus suspicion of what may have transpired. No, but, uh, if, but, if you but look at the accounts, I mean, if you look at what? most of the accounts within the report itself, most of the respondents are pointing to how novel the situation is. The fact that this is COVID-19. It's a pandemic, for Christ's sake. Yes, and novel situations give novel opportunities for novel stealing. And that is what has happened. So the Auditor General cannot just restricts himself to issuing the report and going back to sit in his cozy office. He ought to be able to issue the surcharges under the power of the law that has been provided to him. But I'm saying that the, the political economy um, doesn't necessarily give him the confidence to do that because he knows what happened to his predecessor. And all of us were in Ghana when that happened to the predecessor. And we talked a lot and, you know, 
we 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 did not um, we do not see any change. So of course, he being in that same situation will be a bit you know hesitant um, in making sure that he doesn't go the same way that his predecessor went, just so that what happened to his predecessor doesn't befall him as well. So we need to seriously look at the the root of all these things. Yes, the present case demands that there needs to be some actions. And, you know, I have no, absolutely no hope that any serious action is going to be taken. Mm. Uh, let's I hear have, from... I have, I have no hope that any serious action is going to be taken. But mm. we, the citizens, must insist that the governance model that we run in this country must change. And it must change with a measure of urgency. You see, the 1992 Constitution is a completely bogus constitution that has made sure that all the power that is vested in the executive is capable of being weaponized, is capable of being manipulated, is capable of being used to, for ends that are completely at variance with the interests of the people. And therefore, we must, as a matter of agents, begin serious discussions about changing this 1992 constitution. Mm. That is the root of the evil. And if we do not look at the root, we will continue massaging the issues and applying palliative uh, what doctors call palliative uh, uh, measures, which will never, never deal with the root mm. causes. Of okay, I, I see your perspective. Way. I see your perspective there. But for the NDC, they believe that the immediate step has to be that public hearings on how our funds were expended and possibly a surcharge on individuals who have uh, spent the uh, cash. Uh, Benjamin Kwashi, help us out on that. The belief is that your NDC, your party, is simply playing politics with this. I think, I think we should uh, move from this as a nation. Um, I've taken time to read the Auditor General's report and it's damning. I, I look at the report and I see a country on the verge of total collapse. The impunity with which this NPP administration does its things, the impunity the disregard for laid down procedure, the disregard for the consciences of our nation. It's something that I cannot even uh, uh, wrap my head around it. Look, it's nothing about political expediency or not. COVID happened and everything that we had in our country was geared towards COVID. Everybody said the pandemic, the pandemic this, the pandemic that. Little did we know that government during this global pandemic, where ordinary citizens were suffering, just wanted to make money out of this, this, this pandemic. How insensitive can we be? How? How can we be this insensitive? Look, you read the Auditor General's report and you ask yourself, does the president read these things? Does the vice president read these things? Are we still going to align ourselves with politics when it comes to the wanton dissipation of public funds? Funds that Ghanaian taxpayers are giving us to run the country, it's being used to run individual egos, individual objectives, and individual plans. You can never say that the NDC is making a hue and cry over this for no reason. It's absolutely not here nor there. The report is damning. You can't do this. Look, this morning on another platform, I said, each day there's a scandal that happens. We're looking at the Auditor General's report. We've not finished with it. But then there are documents the presidency have sent even to parliament and the reports that are coming out, they are more damning than what we get in the Auditor General's report. Where did we go wrong? The former, former spokesperson for the Nanado campaign, uh, Mustafa, Dr. Mustafa Hamid, I heard him write when he said um, um, what is going on in the country at that time was, was, was so bad that he said, Wallahi, we need to rescue this country from the NDC. Today, where is he? Can he say the same Wallahi under these circumstances? Look, it's time we put politics aside and surcharge any public official that dissipates public funds to inure to their benefit. The Ghanaian people have sacrificed for everything that we are going through today. It, it shouldn't be happening. Yeah, but, but the, the solution... That, the, like, the solution... Said, yeah, but the solution is the problem now. Your party is saying, uh, let's go to the Public Accounts Committee. 
um, let's um, get Parliament to impress the Auditor General to search out. Some say, I mean, the Auditor General has every single constitutional power to act. He failed to do that in the report. He failed to do that because we have a president that doesn't respect that institution. We have a president who told us that he's coming on board with the announced principle. And when he became president, he had ignored that principle. But how is this? How is this? How is this? How is this? How is this a problem of the president? When you have an individual it's in a office. problem of the president because like my good friend Yakubu said, the president has all the executive powers to ensure that the findings are implemented immediately. If the president cared about the public purse, it shouldn't be me and you calling on him because I believe the Auditor General's report got to him first before he went to Parliament. I believe that the minority in Parliament is not going to sleep. The party is going to ensure that every single cent that was misused, especially under the public uh, 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 funds for COVID-19, mm -hmm. are retrieved and would ensure that we use the proper channels. If the president doesn't want to act, other channels are there that the NDC caucus in parliament will use to retrieve all these monies uh, 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 for the good people of Ghana. Why not go after the Auditor General? At least you've, you've seen his predecessor, someone who's indicated clearly that he has that will to fight corruption. I was just uh, speaking to Daniel Domenico last week. He says, well, all I do is to surcharge. Why is this Auditor General failing to surcharge and, and you're leaving him off the hook just to go after the president? Okay, the, the Auditor General is there appointed by the president. You are right. What happened to Domelevo was because he searched people that are quote unquote big men that are, that are not supposed to be surcharged. Domelevo's crime was that he went after them. This Auditor General has simply said, you know what? I don't want to be sacked. I don't want to fall for the, for, for, for the same thing that Domelevo felt for. This is the report. Parliament, do what you have to do. You see, we are not building institutions by this kind of behavior. When you put fear and timidity in people who are supposed to ensure that the public purse is protected, this is what happens. I think it's a shame on, on, on all of us as Ghanaians, if we don't want to blame the president alone, that we've put in somebody to give us such report and we've made it so easy that you can just say, I'm not surcharging anybody. How do we grow as a country? Well, uh, I, I in don't... years past, in years past, the media, the, the, the CSOs, everybody was going to say, no, you need to do this, you need to search out. Today we see timidity everywhere. So you don't blame the Auditor General because he's also ensuring that he protects whoever appointed him. And that is where the Constitution comes into play. There is too much power for the executive. And if we want to grow as a country, this is time we look at the 1992 Constitution again. This is where we make input to ensure that there's accountability at all levels of government. Uh, Benjamin, this is where Adam would disagree with you, Adam, correct? Because, uh, of course, uh, we saw your protest the other time uh, asking the Auditor General to, to, of course, make use of that constitutional power on surcharge. But I don't know what your thoughts are on what Benjamin is saying. Well, I think we are aligned, except that I would have, uh, and maybe you have a point, I would have insisted that no, this Auditor General must disallow and must surcharge. Otherwise, he should pack bag and baggage and leave that office. Really? Yes. Let's not, let's not give him that opportunity to think that, look, uh, because his president might sack him, therefore don't do what is required of you. No. He must disallow or surcharge or leave that office. Otherwise, as uh, other uh, CSOs have indicated, we probably need to head back to court to compel him to do so. It does not make sense. If you are accepted to take up a public office whose mandate is clearly stated, whose functions have been defined and the Supreme Court have indicated what you need to do, you cannot come back to us and say, you have chosen to give us a 120 or 140-page report, and that's it. That's not sufficient. Let's disallow payments that ought not to have been made. Let's surcharge people who have made payments and, you know, they are, they've done things that ought not to have been done. Then, in addition to that, let's go to the Public Accounts Committee and make sure that any additional investigations, any implementation, uh, audit report implementation committees that ought to be in place are also doing their work. And we are doing a holistic approach to this uh, issue, yeah. not just... One or the other. But, but, but Adam, we've seen in the past, and of course you are still a CSOs in, in court, of course trying to find out the opinion of the Apex Court on, on that order from the president asking on the 
uh, asking the, the previous uh, Auditor General to proceed on an accumulated leave. That matter is not out of the way yet. So it's still fresh um, in the minds of Mr. Ikuyama, uh, who is now the incumbent, knowing that, well, if I go well, ahead to search well, out, well, th there may can, be challenges. You, That's the reality in the system, I guess. Well, yeah, it, it may be a reality, but don't accept the office if you are not ready to perform the function. Mm. Period. It's, you are committing a fraud on the people of this country when you are accept to do to play a role that you have already made up your mind you will not you will not play. I mean, so what are we paying you for? Just to write reports? Then 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 you are not biting. That's why you are seeing the increasing level of impunity that we see across board. It is because the political will, the public officers who have been entrusted to take action, are unwilling to do so. So if you can't do it, don't take the job because we are paying you for a, a function. And that's the point. You are not just there to do what you think you ought to do. The job profile has been defined. The tasks have been outlined. As part of those tasks, we have a Supreme Court ruling that is clear, categorical, yeah. on what should be done in respect of these things. If you refuse to do it, you are refusing to implement the ruling of the highest court, of high, a high, high court of this, of this land. You cannot be allowed to go scot-free. Uh, is Daniel Yao Domelevo not increasingly becoming, uh, I mean, that yardstick by which you, the CSOs, are judging his successor with? Uh, that, that may be unfair on his part, correct? Well, it's not unfair. I mean, um, and, and you know, it's an important thing about governance. You get more effective governance where the participation of key stakeholders uh, is, is promoted. So to the extent that the key stakeholders in our good governance have gone to court, have gotten this ruling, and we all believe that this is good for Ghana, it's good for all of us, uh, you cannot decide to do something that, you know, in your myopic view is the way to go. Uh, and, and Mr. Domlevo was outstanding in that context because he was willing to go along with the court process, he was willing to appreciate that this is what is in the best interest of Ghana, and to take the, the actions. I mean, obviously he knew he was going to step on toes. So if you're not willing to take that level, I mean, it's one of the reasons why, for example, at the moment, uh, uh, Mr. Kesia Jabeng would find a lot of favor with civil society and Ghanaians, because the office that he holds, he is not there to, as it were, carry favor of everybody. Mm. He bound means to step on some toes. But in the best interest of this nation, You've got to take the actions that allow democracy to thrive and for us to have the dividends that we expect. If you think that we should pay you, and mind you, these offices don't go along with small payments. If you want to take those specs and the payments and you're not deliver on it, then you should expect that we'll be criticizing you and comparing you to uh, 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 Mr. Daniel Domlevo, who was willing to go the, the distance, uh, albeit knowing very full well that it was going to come under the scrutiny of the political parties and those who are there. And definitely, you know, as we have seen, mm. they were not willing to allow right. him to execute what was required of him. Uh, gentlemen, finally, let's just uh, dissect these two issues. The public hearing um, on, on the uh, expenditure of COVID-19. What problem will it solve? And now also will dovetail into the concerns of the NDC, asking Parliament to impress the Auditor General to issue that power of surcharge. But we know that there's a constitutional impediment there. And, and let me start off with you, uh, Benjamin Kwashi, the, the fact that your party is trying to, of course, force or influence the Auditor General to act when indeed the laws protect him. He's not subject, quote, to the control of any political establishment, individual or organization. So you're limited in that sc uh, scope. I think, uh, like my friend Adam has indicated, look, um, I don't think that the Auditor General uh, is put in that office not to bite. Um, we pay him to bite. We pay him to ensure that any infractions that happens when you look at the audit of our public funds, you go after whoever made that mistake and ensure that the monies are recouped back into the state. Now, what, what I see uh, clearly to be the challenge 
is the willpower to execute the mandate of his office. Yeah, but the point and is you I can't control this, him. You, you can't control him by what the law says. Yes, we can control him, but then we'll get the appropriate measures that would ensure that he does what the law says. We'll go to the court. And I think that this is the time that we all have to um, ask every arm of government to, for once, put down political colorations and ensure that the system called Ghana works. The judiciary, the, 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 the executive, the legislature, and also we, the citizenry. Our president said we should never be spectators. We should be citizens and not spectators. These are some of the things that we need to talk about. The public account committee hearings, we all listen in and we see the, 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 the wanton dissipation of the public fund. What we need as a people to do is to hold our leaders accountable. How do we hold them accountable? By ensuring that ABC has been indicated in the report that he was not entitled to this amount, but he has gotten that amount. Search out the person, put the person before court. Let the court deal with those people and get us back the money that as citizens could be used. Look, this COVID report by the Auditor General, it has come at a time that we all have said to ourselves that we made mistakes believing that COVID was Ghana's problem. COVID is not. I remember my last interview with you, you indicated COVID globally, uh, 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 Russia, Ukraine war. But now with this Auditor General's report, do you stand by that uh, opinion? No. Because the Auditor General report has clearly told us that instead of COVID being an issue, COVID brought us money that has been distributed into the pockets of politicians. How do we do that? Well, People in, in you're finding this out because the report is public, and yet your political yes. party is saying, let's go ahead and hold public hearings on the accounts. What, yes. what would that achieve if, if, it's, if it's not for political gains? You know what it's achieving? For, for a week and over, the media was discussing the fallout from the racial poll in the minority uh, caucus in parliament. And everybody was happy. You know why? Because even the communicators of the ruling party were so happy with it. Now we've come to reality. The report is here. How did we get to know about details of the report? We got to know about details of the report from the public account committee hearings. It's a brilliant thing that the committee hearings were made public so we can all see we can all see firsthand. Yeah, but that, 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 that will not bring back the money. It would not bring back the money, would it? You know why it will not bring back the money? You know why it will not bring back the money? Because Ghana, as usual, we make it topical for today, tomorrow, the next day. On Monday, the media sets another agenda for discussions. How do we continue as a country this way? It should, the hearing alone should let Ghanaians get infuriated to the extent that they see that, look, we've made sacrifices. There have been haircuts here and there. We are being told that make sacrifices even of your investment. The investment we are supposed to make sacrifices for, there is one single person who is making millions out of it and asking us to make haircuts? No. The public account hearings has enlightened us as a citizenry and has made us realize that it is time we hold accountable whoever it is that needs to ensure that this report is implemented. And I can assure you, whichever means, whichever ways legally possible will be used by the minority caucus in parliament so that this ends it needs to end uh, adam, it's a pity seeing mm, things like this uh, adam do you agree with the public hearings on, on the COVID expenditure and what will it solve by the way so i first of all i think it's a good idea uh because it extends the period of discussion Otherwise, blessing you and your friends would will, will kill this within another. Week. <laughs> so, so, so you, you're help, coming. You're, you're coming at the media. Let's help, <laughs> yes, yes. Let's help you to keep it alive. It's very important. All right. Yeah. So I think it's a brilliant idea. Let's continue talking about it, and not just that. Let's ensure that the legal processes which we may need to start mm. to compel the current auditor general and any other persons and entities that must act to act are also brought on board. So the continued discussion and keeping it in the limelight, for me, is good. It's good for Ghana. It's good for all of us. In any case, the opposition party at any given time, in any government scenario, is the, is the party that is responsible for holding the ruling government in check. So there is a sense in which today is the NDC. They are playing their rule by the book by holding the current ruling government in check. And it is good if they say a particular issue deserves a lot more uh, attention. In this case, honestly speaking, 
This report is so saddening and depressing. It's almost as if we decided there are no systems and there are no processes in this country. So paying a little more attention for another one month, I think, would be a good thing so that we can drill down to who are the spending officers who have messed us up, who are the directors, who are the ministers or deputy ministers who we should be, have been fired long time ago. I think it's a good thing to do. Okay, uh, let's wrap up then. So uh, next phase will be in Parliament. Uh, possibly the hearings may happen, but what will, would you be expecting from the MPs as we probe these matters? That's to me? Yes. Yeah, I would expect that at least you are drilling down. Uh, I've always wondered what are the names of the persons who have the authority, the influence to do the procurement, to do the expenses, what efforts did they make in line with the Public Financial Management Act to make sure that there was reconciliation and that the paperwork and paper trail was complete. Um, any persons along the chain who do not follow the law, let's identify them individually and let's make sure that they face the full rigors of the law. We seem to have a, a situation where public officers can get away with murder. This is a good time to turn that round mm. and ensure that you set a precedent that can last this nation mm. and make sure that people avoid taking up these kind of actions that ultimately right. just pull down and undermine our democracy. Mm. Uh, Adam Senanu is uh, co-chair of the Citizens' Movements Against Corruption. Benjamin, for you, uh, where, where are you leaving us off on? No, I think, I, think um, I agree with my brother Adam um, uh, on the floor of the House. I expect that there should be a, a vigorous debate. I expect that there should be a, a consensus between both the majority and the minority uh, to ensure that this wanton dissipation of public funds comes to an end. And I believe that our leaders need to know from hands that whatever you do, we would get to know through the Auditor General's report. If you're doing it for the benefit of the country, we'll know. If you are using the citizenry's money for the good cause, we'll know. But if we continue in this trajectory, it's sad where we lead in our country to. Uh, young people have given up on the economy, and, and, and you ask yourself why. There's still hope. Yes, there's still hope. But we cannot allow this impunity to co continue. We cannot continue to disrespect the sensitivities of the Ghanaian people. I think it's time that we all rally around as a nation, irrespective of our political coloration. The media should also support the minority in whatever they do to hold this government to check. Let's make the agenda setting something that will help in the development of Ghana, not something that would only adhere to the parochial interest of somebody sitting at the Jubilee House. But it should be something that we're doing that will inure to the benefit of generations yet unborn. We can't, we can't, and we cannot continue to use funds this way and expect that there will be uh, something for generation yet unborn. After all, we have met something. Are we going to say that we'll leave them with nothing and then they suffer just to, to, to satisfy the whims and caprices of somebody? No. We will grow from that and we urge the media to help. We urge that the, the, the legislature, the executive, and then the judiciary, the judiciary's role becomes so important. Let's not say we don't trust in the judiciary. Let's go to them with the public account records uh, 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 about this wanton dissipation of our funds and hear what they tell us, the Ghanaians. If they tell us that, no, we don't want it, then we know that the judiciary is also compromised like the executive. But we shouldn't get there as a nation. We trust in the judiciary. And as a political party, uh, the NDC that I belong to will respect the decisions of the court and will put the truth before them. Truth that would enable them to retrieve funds that have been misused by public officials. Thank you, uh, Benjamin Kwashi, for joining us. Um, also to Adam Senanu, the co uh, Citizens Movement Against Corruption, and to Hadi Yakubu of the Economic Fighters League. Well, a lot more is unfolding on this matter. Nonprofit organization Sen Ghana has just released a statement equally raising concerns about the COVID 19 expenditure. It comes with the title of the Auditor General's Report on COVID 19 expenditure. Uh, should not become another audit report. Uh, het master role and that's coming through from Sen Ghana as you see on your screens there. Uh, SEPs indicate that Sen Ghana has observed with keen interest the continuous um, uh, media reportage on the Auditor General's report regarding the misappropriation of funds mobilized by the government of Ghana to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Multiple reports suggest that uh, a substantial part of the COVID-19 funds have been grossly 
misapplied and channeled to fund other government interventions and uh, flagship programs as well. It is, set, uh, it is a sad incident to note that out of nearly 22 billion Ghana cities that was raised in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic between March uh, 2020 and June 2022, uh, just a little over half, which is 12 billion Ghana cities, was used to fight the pandemic and its related impact. The misapplication and mismanagement of these funds directly contravenes and also violates the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 91, which was instituted to regulate the public sector. And Sen continues to raise more concerns, asking uh, the Finance Ministry to act fast on some of the infractions. We'll definitely follow that and bring you some updates. But we'll